So sorry about the white noise in the background. It's a ginormous air conditioning unit. I am in the parking lot of church awaiting my 87 year old father to give him a ride home after he walked here. Good morning, Shroomer Spore Walkers and mushroom loving folk. Today, we are gonna talk about safe handling instructions for foraged wild mushrooms. I'm gonna talk about a poisoning that killed two people and sickened over 50 others. And the culprit is thought to be morel mushrooms. Oh no. But you know what time it is first. Always thoroughly cook wild foraged mushrooms. Very few wild mushrooms can be eaten raw. And there are a few that people do, but for the purposes of this video, only eat cooked mushrooms that you can positively identify 100% using multiple sources. You are solely responsible for what you identify and decide to consume and feed to others. So be very thorough and cautious. Disclaimer, I am just talking about a case like the one I'm gonna mention and giving my opinions. Um, I will link in the description box all of the data for the health department of the area news articles and things like that so you can research it and make up your own mind as to why people were sickened and why to die. So yeah, the deaths and sickness occurred in 2023 and these were people at a restaurant who were served raw morels. Two died, three were hospitalized, and over 50 people were sickened. And those morels came from out of the country I believe from China, species designation, and that's super sad. The morel species in question was Morcella sextillata. This is a cultivated morel grown out of the USA, imported here. So think about that time that it takes and was served at a local restaurant out west and it was served raw. So one of two things happened. Toxins in that a mushroom or bacteria on that mushroom. You decide about that. But two people did pass away and there was a report of a forager in the Pacific Northwest who ate um, a bird morel and also died. So, mushrooms can change over time and become toxic but also the storage could also be a, a, a factor. Storage could always be a factor, bacteria grows. Okay, yeah, so this restaurant served morels. It was a sushi restaurant, theoretically, and they were raw. And over 50 people became ill and two passed away. And this is not a joke. I'm very sorry for the grieving families who lost loved ones or maybe had serious health issues because of this. Um, you know, proper storage might have been a factor. However, the raw morels themselves may have contained a toxin. It's very difficult uh, to be 100% certain, although the health department there said they ruled out a lot of bacteria and fungus contamination. Morels are cultivated, maybe chemicals were used on them that are deadly or toxic. Pesticides, things like that, preservatives, who knows? We don't know. We're just theorizing, hypothesizing. But this goes to show you that even the most innocuous choice edible that has been consumed for generations could potentially kill you if you don't store it correctly. And there's always the possibility that mushrooms evolve and small groups may be toxic or other ones are completely fine. The gyromitra genus, the false morel, is one like that. Be very, very cautious. I don't recommend eating that, but many do. And it requires special preparation. In some of the reports I read, they screen for bacteria 
and thus then felt it pointed to the mushrooms themselves the you know the toxins in the mushroom ever you can never screen for every possible type of bacteria fungus etc there might have been something in there from a long transit time poor storage you know and i will go into those details of what you want to do with with mushrooms to keep them safe so a lot of storage and preserving techniques are common sense when it comes to foraged mushrooms i field clean with a brush on the end of my opinel knife brush off all the dirt, trim with the knife, any dirt, so that the mushrooms do not uh, get dirt on each other. That's a really good tip. If you don't do that, think about it because it'll save you a lot of work later and you don't have to wash the mushrooms right away. Storage. This is why people get poo-pooed for carrying plastic bags in the woods. You don't wanna store mushrooms for days in plastic bags. They sweat, that makes bacteria, they get slimy, they will rot much quicker. So if you're on a whole, all day backpack uh, adventure and you're picking mushrooms and put them in plastic and tie them up, that could be bad. You know, if you're just in and out for an hour or two, no problem. But mushrooms should be stored in a paper bag, a loose fitting container with aeration if it's plastic, putting some paper towels in there to absorb extra moisture and in the refrigerator definitely 40 degrees or below. I believe the actual regulation says 38 degrees Fahrenheit. So you wanna keep them cool. Your goal when you harvest foraged wild mushrooms is to keep them cool and dry and clean and not harvest old looking specimens with UV bleaching, bug damage, dried out and curled because they can get wet in the forest dry out, wet, dry out, and get moldy and bacteria ridden. Remember, store wild mushrooms below 40 degrees, keep them dry, use aerated containers. And also, um, you know, sometimes cooking doesn't remove all the toxins. Uh, there are a lot of things we don't know about out there in nature. Safe storage guidelines in the state of Wisconsin for certified mushroom foragers is 14 days refrigerated below 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, I've had mushrooms in my fridge longer that have gotten a little dried out and I've still eaten them back in the day and I was fine. But technically that is the rule. So if you note the date that you picked, harvested these wild edible mushrooms that you've identified using multiple sources, um, then 14 days from there, you want to preserve them somehow. Preserving includes cooking, dehydrating, and freezing. So get yourself a dehydrator. They're inexpensive, but one recommendation I will make is make sure it has a temperature dial on it because what you want is the lowest setting for herbs and spices, 95 degrees Fahrenheit. You want to slice mushrooms thin and evenly space them on the dehydrator trays and do not overcrowd. Check them every four to six hours, depending how wet they are, and rotate the trays to get a nice, even dehydration. And you want them crisp, hard and dry. And when they're warm, you might not be able to tell, so let them cool, turn off the dehydrator when you think they're dry, and check them in an hour. And if they're soft, turn that back on until you, know, you take them out of there and they're crispy and then put them in an airtight container. There is no consensus on how long dehydrated mushrooms last once properly dried. However, I have eaten them months later and even have some that are over a year old and I've tried them and they were okay. This might not be the case for you. It depends how you store them. There, there's no consensus. So you have to use your best judgment. Freezing, that's pretty obvious. Make sure the mushrooms are clean. Um, if you decide to freeze them raw, that can uh, lead to a mushy texture later. So at least let them air dry a little bit, cook them, and then put them in freezer bags, double freezer bags, and you should have better luck with the consistency. Some people with morels, they dehydrate them about 25% and then vacuum seal them and freeze. And that's um, a way to make them taste very fresh and delicious. I flour them and freeze them raw. 
with a seasoned uh, flour. I like Drake's, that's for Michigan. But everybody's got their own thing there. Um, and I've also cooked them in butter and frozen them that way. Here's a little trick. If you're picking uh, wild mushrooms and it's rained recently and they're kind of soggy, roll them up in a paper towel or a very clean fiber-free dish towel and let that water kind of by osmosis come out. Uh, place them in a, a flat tray and, and let a fan blow on them for a couple hours. And then put them in the fridge and put some paper towels in the container and make sure it's aerated or the bag and they will last a lot longer. Cool, dry, and clean. CDC. Cool, dry, and clean. Cool, dry, and clean. That's what I mean. Keep your mushrooms safe for others to eat. Always cook thoroughly before consumption. Before you make sure your mushrooms are fresh. How do you do that? You look them over. You look for bug damage, holes. Um, you look for actual bugs crawling on them. You look for discoloration areas, extreme dirt, which you know you can't clean properly, and ultraviolet bleaching, drying, and then getting wet back and forth. You'll see like different coloration on the cap. And they smell good. No mold. When foraging wild edibles, always check property by property that this is a legal activity in your area. Many state parks and forests and some natural areas owned by your state DNR allow foraging for wild edible mushrooms, nuts, seeds, and berries. If you are foraging on private property, make sure you own it or you've received permission from the owner. A lot of times if you knock on the door and say, hey, I see some really good mushrooms um, from the road on your property, would you like me to identify them for you so that you can enjoy them? Or if you are not interested, may I have them? Should you pull mushrooms out of the ground or cut them? I think you should cut them. Why? Dirt. When you pull them out, you can feel clean them. But don't put them all in the bag together all dirty because it's just gonna contaminate more mushrooms that initially were clean. So that's the reason. There's no scientific evidence that it prevents fruiting or more fruiting or harms the, you know, the mushroom mycelium underground if you pluck them out or cut them. Um, there's small evidence that when you cut them, that allows bacteria to get in and harm um, the mushroom possibly. But, you know, whatever you've been doing, your tradition, just is fine. Just clean the mushrooms well. Thanks so much for watching. If you learned a little something, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Be safe in the woods. Let someone know where you're gonna be if you go alone. Take some kind of GPS device so you can find your way back to your car. Make sure your cell phone has a signal and whatnot. Um, enjoy nature. Enjoy your wild harvest.